potential ally. And once you know who they are, I mean, just go ahead and lose all your fear or whatever and introduce yourself. Always have a business card at hand. And also what is very important, always have, also have, always have a short and clear message of what you want. And after that, follow up. Once you give the message to the people that you're selected or who you are interested in, always ask their, their information back, their card, call them back, send them emails to find out, to follow up your, your conversation. What were the result of this? In one of these meetings, I, I met people from the Congress, and I, just, I was really afraid at the beginning, but in the coffee, I just approached them and gave them a card and told them what I was doing. And, uh, and, and they saw, I think that they saw that we were, we were serious. I mean, we, we just were one patient that was crying for, for, for getting more benefits, but we had something to tell them. So I met in one of these meetings, I met the two senators of the health commission, health commission of different political parties, and also superintendents of health, of health. So I gave them my card, I told them what I did, and to my surprise, two or three late, days later, I received an invitation to be to be part of the of, um, in the meeting in the Congress where they were going to hear patient organizations about their needs. So I prepared myself to the meeting, and as I told you, I had a really clear and solid me message. What I need is access to Jesus treatment. And I, it was no, not only what I was asking for, but I, I brought with me scientific support. I had a, this doctor that I had met that has was helping me. He prepared. He had prepared already guidelines for this, and we also. Uh, I also took with me a, a document of the social, a, a study of the social impact of this here in Chile. After this, uh, what we moved, uh, as I told you, we we gave a, a step forward. I had identified other patient organizations, so uh, we said, why don't we work together? We also have. Uh, we all have uh, the same needs, so it, it was in order to have a common voice. I mean, we all need universal health care. It would be an opportunity to represent small and big organizations. There's, there's some, some uh, uh, diseases here, pathologists who have two or three patients only, and it, it is a way of, to have a common voice with the small ones and also. And always I saw it as an opportunity to share experiences, best, best practices, and, and work together. Um, so uh, I here is some some pictures of the some of the meetings that we we had that we that we we got together and and uh, okay what in the meanwhile what what we were organizing organizing this alliance of patient organizations locally what happened there had been a, a social movement called uh, the sick people also march and the the person who had promoted this movement. Uh, had an idea of a law that should that, that should cover uh, high cost treatment. He he died, but uh, the president uh, passed a bill, passed a bill to I mean, with a project of law with this idea that all the high cost treatment would be covered by the health system. So as I had been moving around and I had met people from the Congress, I was invited to the to the meeting where the president Hello? signed this. This, uh, this bill. So we had already formed this alliance of patient organizations. So what, what would be our next goal? This, the project of law was called Ley Ricardo Soto. So we decided let's work together. And our common goal is have this uh, law passed. And which our first demands were we want a law that would really benefit patients who need high cost treatments. Uh, a law which would be designed with the participation of the patients, and as we didn't want uh, no, we didn't have we didn't want that in the future patients who have their own fam familiar or neighbors or friends fundraising to cover high cost treatments. So um, we that we form a task force of this of this uh, all this alliance of patient organizations. Uh, we we uh, we searched for the support of some some lawyers, and we reviewed this bill uh, that the president had signed, and we found out that there were 
several points which we didn't agree and that they, this law wouldn't really benefit us as we had thought it would. So we studied the law as article by article with the, with the support of some lawyers and we made a, a petition, a document with our petition and sent it to the congressmen of different political parties. We sent it also to the Congress Health Commission and also to the Health Ministry. What were, what were achievements that all the congressmen support us and they agreed in that all what we were asking for was, was valid. I mean, they, they support us. Well, that's the point where we are now. But what is the next goal is, well, get the president's approval to a petition. And what are, how do we plan to do it? First of all, dialogue. And that's where we are. We are and also with media pressure, but mainly dialogue. We've been working on making a, a professional work. We had studied the law. We had made our, our uh, recommendations. And we, spoke, we hope to be, be heard by the president, too. By the side, that's Hello. I said made media pressure. We haven't been able to be on the, news, there? on the newspapers. And yes, the third place is hope there's a social presentation. media campaign. And what we are, our slogan will be from now on is uh, my, um, that is president approved. My conference uh, window isn't that's, working, so I'm trying on uh, now, the computing now. The, is the, the final, it's one of the we have a meeting at the Congress to see what is what the, they propose, the, the president is proposing. So, well, that's where we are now, and we hope that we will be, uh, we will achieve our goal finally. Well, okay. that's part of our history here, and probably when we meet together in, in Miami, I can have the latest information for you about what, what was the end of the story. But in the meanwhile, I just would like to thank you very much for hearing our, our experience in Chile. Okay, uh, that was Piga from Chile sh sharing her best practice. I'm um, now going to turn this over to Nikhil from India, who will share uh, with us his presentation. Nikhil, you can go ahead. Yeah. Please go ahead, Nikhil. Yeah, yeah, I'm just doing it. Good evening, everybody. This is Nikhil from Max Foundation India. Max Foundation India, and this is MS, in partnership with Friends of Max. Namaste from India. Friends of Max consists of individuals impacted directly or indirectly by PML or just. Friends of Max is a registered charitable trust. It is self supported and organized. Today, there are thousands of active members of the Friends of Max spread over in 17 city chapters throughout India. We have over 17,000 registered members, including 600 plus just patients. Each city chapter has up to 15 leaders who are either patients or caregivers and are instrumental in organizing support group programs with the help of Max India team. There in the photo, you can see a Max India team lead, led by a head of chief. Our aim is to create a safe and solid platform for patients and caregivers to share and learn. The agenda of Friends of Max is to meet periodically once in three months for a just awareness meeting. We connect with patients and caregivers through email, Facebook, and website. We also creating help in creating FAQs for just in English and local languages. Now, Novotis has designed GPAP, which is now since 2009 known as NOAA, to provide limit free of cost to eligible patients in developing countries who meet specific medical and socioeconomic guidelines. The Back Foundation, as NOAA's main partner in administration of NOAA, provides the following. It guides the physicians and patients through the process. It provides emotional support, information, and referral assistance to patients, the family members, and caregivers. Now, one of the challenges that we face in India, first is access to correct information. Now, this being a relatively new disease for treatment, there's a gap of learning and knowledge among doctors and patients alike. Therefore, access to GIST specialist centers is important, which may be lacking in some of the parts of India. Access to GIST specialist doctors. Small towns and cities and villages have a problem about having GIST specialist doctors. The other problem that we face is compliance in taking the drugs. 
Now, these are, this is of twofold. One is the doctor's knowledge. The doctor's education is crucial for the con understanding the duration of continuation of liver post-surgery. And secondly, the patients also have to be educated so that they continue their drug still advised by the concerned doctor. Now, another point which is of a challenge in India is the language barrier. India has over 30 plus languages. So sometimes communication of a patient, especially if it's come from a village area with the doctors, can be an issue. In other challenges in India, there are myths and stigmas associated with cancer. In some cases, we have observed that cancer patients have been outcast from their family or community, especially in villages. Therefore, it is important to educate and counsel the patients and relatives and not to treat it as a very highly communicable disease. Now, there's also been difficulty in procuring drugs like sorafenib and regulofenib, where there's very little assistance program and the cost of the drug is very high. Now, to overcome these challenges, we have regular needs, as I have previously mentioned. What is the agenda of these needs? The agenda of the needs is to information on this is diagnosis and latest treatment modalities are given by the doctors. We have an oncologist and an oncosurgeon who attend this meet. Here, the testimonial of patients with question and answer session is conducted, which is well supported by the doctors, answering the smallest of the patients doubt in local languages. In this meet, emphasis on compliance is always advocated, creating awareness to the importance of the regular intake of the drug. A nutritionist also guides the patients about the right and healthy diet. Tips are shared about minimizing the side effect of the drug. Tata Hospital and the doctors are supportive and helpful in conducting these meetings in Mumbai in their auditorium. Tata Hospital is a premier cancer research center in India. Here is a photo of a doctor attending the question and answer session. The photo of the participants during the meet. Here is the oncologist addressing the meet. Here is a group photo at the end of the meet. In a February 2015 meeting, Mr. Marcus Wattenberg, director of Spain, happened to be with us and he shared us the German perspective in this advocacy. Now, we also have some special agenda during the meeting. One of this agenda was the GIST Awareness Day celebration in July 2014. We made paper boards during the meeting to support the Life Raft Group Initiative. We had lots of fun in making the boards and supporting the cause. We had received a couple of photos of us doing the same. We released the boards into the Sea of Hope as a special gesture. In one of the meetings, a detailed report of the discussions and the advances gleaned from the New Horizons GIST Zurich May 2014 was presented before the doctors and patients and caregivers. The latest advances in the diagnosis and treatment of GIST was mentioned in this report. We also conduct drama therapy. In this impromptu performance of small skits based on a specific topic is done. It helps to break the ice among participants and to encourage them to get involved in playing characters in the drama. It helps them overcome the inhibitions and express them freely. Here is a tobacco awareness drama therapy we are conducting. And we had a blast doing the drama therapy. We also conduct art therapy. Here the participants are encouraged to paint and draw. It helps them emotionalize and connect and brings out the creativity. It is art therapy with a smile and art therapy with a lots of color. We also have a nutritionist who talks. Here is a nutritionist giving a talk on gastritis. The management of gastritis is a common side effect of living with the help of proper diet. We also have yoga therapy in some of the sessions, which is conducted by a yoga expert. Talk on importance of healthy life, yoga, pranayama is given. Simple de-stressing yoga techniques are taught. Here is a yoga instructor going helping us through the exercises. Here are the participants doing the yoga stretches. Now, Friends of Max also supported the Terry Fox run, which was conducted in Feb 15. Here's the Max, Friends of Max team doing the Terry Fox run, which helped, it, it's a fundraiser, which helped in raising a lot of funds for cancer research for Tata Hospital. In the recently concluded leadership summit of Max India and Friends of Max in April 2015, over 150 
city chapter leader attended this meet along with the chief of Novartis India and the chief of Max uh, Foundation International PAC along with the Max India team. It was a great resounding success. Now to create awareness amongst India, we had launched the first website in India for this support, which includes FAQs. It includes links to important international this support websites. Here are the main pages, the photos of it, the website. Here is the FAQ page, testimonial of patients, the unit group, and every meeting which you conduct will present the report on the website. What are the future plans of Friends of Max? We are planning to launch a forum on the website for patients. Questions will be answered by our expert panel of doctors. We aim to spread awareness among doctors about the latent, latest treatment modalities on this and improving drug and information accessibility to villages. We also aim to set up this groups in major regions in India, to translate FAQs in major Indian languages, and to reach out to more doctors and update them about the spread of awareness of this. Thank you. This is Dr. Nikhil Goagrakar, a Friends of Max volunteer from Mumbai, India. Thank you so much, Nikhil, for sharing with us what um, our friends in India are doing to support the GIST community. It was an excellent presentation. I'm now Thank going you. to move to um, our friend Ferdinand in Kenya so he can begin to share with us what's being done in Kenya. Ferdinand, can you begin? Yes. Hi. How are you? Very good. Um, Please begin. Yeah, my name is Ferdinand Mongura. I hope you can be able to see me through my webcam. Well, Hands of Kenya is a GIST and CML support group. Hands of Kenya was an idea realized by two patients out of the need for emotional support in June 2007. Hands of Kenya is registered with the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Development. Our membership consists of victors of GIST as well as CML. At Hands of Kenya, we believe we belong to a community of survivors, caregivers, partners, with a common goal of supporting each other in all aspects, but only in the time of illness. They, we believe that uh, by joining Hands of Kenya, we derive an immediate benefit, which means love in Kiswahili. The, 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 the most important thing that we believe in as a group is the flow of love from this member, uh, special membership. And uh, we have an adage that we believe also in that if you want to run fast, you run, as a, you run alone. But if you want to run for a long time, you run as a group. So we believe in being together so that you can have this, you can, you can walk through this journey for a, for a long time together. Uh, we had our first GIST meeting that was held at the Nairobi Hospital here in Nairobi. Uh, this meeting was long overdue. It was out of the need for Hands of Kenya to support one another. The first time the first time organized a one-day conference. This meeting, having been long overdue, was graced, was graced well by our GIST patients and was very successful. Our objective for the meeting was to educate and inform, that is bring on board our physicians, our dietitians, our counselors, and our physiotherapists, and also to distribute materials with the latest information on this. Our second objective was to, to a GIST executive committee. We needed to form a committee that will enable run the Kenzo Kenya GIST community. This is because for a long time we've always focused on CML and we decided now it's time to remember our GIST brothers and sisters. Our third objective was actually to get together. During the first meeting, we needed to be together so that we can be able to know one another and share our experiences. So bring together all GIST patients from every corner of the nation, share experiences, 
grow and learn from each other. Well, uh, that was our first meeting. As you can see, that is Professor Abinya, our leading oncologist and head of GPAP group, GPAP program in Kenya. Professor Abinya was making a point across. He tackled disease and drug monitoring, which was our main keynote speech. Basically, he wanted the patients to have a feel of what this is all about besides the one-on-one -on -one, uh, patient doctor sessions. So we wanted to bring together the patient and the doctor so the doctor can be able to answer the, some of the questions that cannot be asked uh, by patients. So this, this was our keynote speech. This was actually the main uh, core agenda of the meeting that day. Uh, these are Henzo Kenya members. Uh, most of them are just patients. Uh, some were accompanied by their family members. It was a very important day. It was very beautiful, and uh, it was very successful. We also had a good nutritionist. The diet topic was well covered by the dietitian. One notable issue are the many myths surrounding what food to eat as a cancer patient. This highlighted the need to just hold one day conference just to discuss good diet so as to get rid of the many myths that are unsubstantiated. We'll realize that uh, there are so many myths that are out there about what food to eat and what food not to eat. And this has greatly impacted negatively on the lives of our GIST patients because some of these myths are, un, are unsubstantiated. These are just information that are passed from one person to another. And uh, you realize that most of them actually do not make sense. So out of, the, of this conference that we had, I realized as a chairman that we need to have we need to have a day that we will set aside just to have a topic about food and the importance of good diet and what is a myth and what is not a myth. Next, we also had a, a session whereby patients could share their experiences. This particular topic was very touching because so many patients came together and were able to talk about their stories, thereby encouraging one another. Some of these stories were very touching, some were very moving, and some of the, uh, uh, of course, most of all, were, they were very um, uh, uplifting. So you can see a patient there actually uh, talking about experience, and you can tell how uh, attentive the other patients were. Well, uh, after the ceremony, of course, we had to remember our, our speakers. You can see me there handing over a certificate to the nutritionist who has played a very important role being a hands of Kenya nutritionist for the last four years. So we decided to give her an appreciation with a hands of Kenya certificate. Well, uh, we also this, uh, did a group photo after the meeting that day. And uh, the group photo, the, the hands of patients were holding the banner we stand together for the GIST Awareness Day that is going to be on July 13th this year. Hello, Ferdinand? Are you still there? Okay, um, it seems um, Ferdinand is uh, finished with his presentation. I'm going to 
transition to Harard in the Netherlands to begin his presentation. So, Harard, okay. can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, um, you can begin. Okay, thank you. Well, I'd like to give you an update of a research project plan that we that we have actually we're just about to start a project um, and um, it's about analyzing patient discussions on listservs and social media I gave a brief presentation about the plan on New Horizons in Zurich last year and as I said I would like to give you an update on where we are now um, the Input for GIST research is typically the data that comes from, from the clinics, from treatment of patients, so the electronic patient um, doc documentation, the digital patient registry. Um, then we have, of course, the tumor tissue samples and the outcomes of, of special research projects like clinical trials and uh, testing the efficacy and toxicity of medicines. Uh, but also we have patient-generated data, and one excellent example of that is uh, the registry, the patient registry that the LifeRaft group is, is, uh, has set up and is maintaining. And um, if I'm correct, it contains now 1,700 patient records, uh, and also the tissue bank uh, that was initiated by um, the LifeRaft group. But this, um, all these data on this slide um, is actually structured data. What I'm interested in is unstructured data. Um, when I got my diagnosis, um, I started to be active on the email discussion lists of Life Raft Group and GIST Support International and also nationally in our own patient group, which is only 300 uh, patients in the Netherlands. Um, and uh, when, I, when I did that, I was looking for specific information about patients similar to me, um, hereditary effects, um, uh, my special mutation, PDG, FRA, uh, D842V, uh, so I, I started looking at the uh, participating in the Facebook group of Just Support International. Um, I'm sure all of you know, know uh, are familiar with that, and the email list with G, of, of GSI and uh, LifeRaft Group. And when I when doing that, I I discovered that there is a wealth of information um, in those patient discussions. Um, but also, um, it is quite a job to read every day all the emails, and um, there is a lot of noise. There's a lot of repeating the previous mails uh, when responding. Um, so um, I found that quite quite a job to come to the interesting information, and. My background is one in ICT research. I've, I've, I'm familiar with all the developments that are going on in, 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 in the realm of research on internet, research of social media. So I know a bit what the possibilities are. So I, I started thinking we need smart systems to filter the information, to get summaries, uh, and also to find interesting patterns. Um, when we use the, the, the proper tools, I'm sure that we will find answers on the questions that we have, but even we will find answers on questions that we even hadn't, hadn't thought of before. Patients exchange a lot of information, um, and even uh, I noticed that they share information that they will not tell their doctor. I've seen, for instance, examples of people um, saying that they were stopping their medication, that they were stop stopping taking Gleevec, and they didn't tell their doctor. 
um, this is information that the doctors um, who treat us uh, will certainly be interested in, but they don't have the time to to, get, to go to the uh, to the social media and the, the list search and read all the information there. Um, if we look at the developments that we um, well no sorry I'm. I'm missing, I think. Okay, let, I'll continue. Um, yes, the developments that we, where we can uh, observe. Uh, first of all, we see that um, Internet is part of our lives nowadays. And our, our um, fellow GIST patients, um, many of them are active on the Internet. This is something that we see in particular in case of rare diseases, rare cancers. People have never heard of the disease before, so they, they, they are anxious. What, what is it that I was diagnosed with? Are there other people with the same disease? So they become active and find people with the same disease and start discussing. We also see that there is a growing awareness among the medical professionals that they actually should not just look at the disease, but they should look at the patients, and that patients should be included in the whole process of, of treatment. Uh, shared decision-making is something that is being discussed now. Uh, patients are more informed than in the past. They, they should be part of the decision process, but also patients should be involved when, this, when new research projects or clinical trials are being set up. Um, and doctors become more aware of that, and they are open to, 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 to receive information from patients. And then we also see the advances in, in ICT possibilities. Uh, there's a lot of talk about big data uh, and, and about possibilities when we analyze all the data that we have on the internet. Um, and in case of the uh, social media and the list serves, in, it concerns unstructured data. It's, it's written language, so we, we need special tools that can process the natural languages. But they are available. We did a preliminary first trial um, using the data that is on the Facebook page of uh, GIST Support International. Um, and here you see, uh, I will show you two word clouds. This one is about um, side effects of Gleevec and Sutan. Um, there's a lot of discussion about side effects, but also about um, how people cope with the side effects, what they do, uh, or what time they they take their medicine um, in combination with food or not, uh, things like that. That is valuable information for other patients, but also for the doctors. And another thing that I found is that um, it occurred to me when, when I was reading all the information on the listservs that um, there were several people uh, among the GIST patients who had also problems with their thyroid. Um, and of course, we know that there is there is a side effect um, on the thyroid uh, from Gleevec, but I'm talking about a tumor in the thyroid. Several people with GIST have had an operation on their thyroid, on, 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 on tumors in the thyroid. And I was just wondering, can this be just coincidence? Both GIST and thyroid cancer are rather rare. Or is there a connection? Is, there, is this one of the hidden patterns that we, we can find when we analyze these discussions? And um, it was, well, that often that I think that it is something that should be further researched by the GIST specialists and the GIST researchers. So this is the kind of hypothesis that we can get when we analyze these uh, social media and, and uh, email discussions. Now, um, when we get results from, from this kind of analysis, of course we should 
um, as I mentioned, um, the, the GIST researchers should continue and should combine the patient-generated generated information with the patient registries that we have, the pathology adjacent databases, uh, but also with the, um, the, the standing medical publications that are available in PubMed. The status of our project um, is as follows. Um, a month ago, I organized a workshop at the University of Leiden with a number of um, uh, prominent ICT researchers from different universities. And also, um, there was one of the best uh, GIST specialists in the Netherlands, who was also a professor at Leiden University. He was also present, and he, he was very, very interested um, and uh, want, wanted to participate in the project. So we have now a research team. Um, uh, last week, I visited the LiveRaft group, and we discussed the possibility of cooperation. And the LiveRaft group is, uh, well, uh, they can speak for themselves. They are, they are present, but I found them uh, very interested and also open for cooperation. So the plan is that we, um, we start a cooperation. Um, in the very short term, we will do a proof of concept with a limited uh, budget and um, a limited uh, running time. And I hope that within just a few months, we will have some interesting results that we can then share with um, also with funding agencies uh, with the purpose to get a more budget for a large project. Um, and um, there's, there are many research questions that we can address using this uh, uh, type of analysis. I've mentioned already uh, hereditary aspects, uh, the comorbidity with other cancer, side effects, um, how po people cope with, with taking their medicines, uh, is there interaction with food, um, the relation between lifestyle and, and quality of life, um, any alternative treatments that patients take, uh, the, the, this is not often addressed in the official realm of, of medicine, but I think it's, there, 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 there are many patients that try alternative treatments, and it would be interesting to know that, and also if there is any effect, and compliance uh, with taking medicines. Okay, thank so, you so much that was for my our presentation. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, we learned a lot um, from your side and what you're working on. I'm going to turn this over to Martin now. I just want to let you know, I know we're at 12 o'clock, but just because we start a little late, we are going to go over. So I just want to uh, make, uh, make note of that to people. Um, and then you know we'll have some questions at the end. I just want to let you know that this is also being recorded, so if you have to cut out early, you can listen to the recording um, later on. Okay, Martin, okay, do you I, want I, to sorry, get started? Uh, can, can I speak uh, for a minute? I, I will have oh, to sure. leave. I will have to leave. Um, I think ten past five. So maybe if there are questions for me, they can be put in in front of the other questions. Okay. After the um, next did, presentation, I mean, yeah. Are you asking for a question right now, or you're saying? No, no, no. Well, after, what, after, after all the presentations are over. Yes, Martin, it's the last presentation, and then also, if we don't have time for questions, um, we can always connect people um, via email, and also we have the New Horizons meeting coming up where okay. people can ask questions yes. in person. Okay. Thanks Great. so much. All right, Martin, go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon or good evening, depending wherever you are located. The aim of my contribution today is to present a possible approach on how patient meetings or patient seminars can be organized and to show samples of patient meetings with the specific subjects discussed with experts in the GIST field and also with other specialists dealing with patients' problems and patients' issues in general. Let me start with an important fact. Where is the meeting? 
the location is important because you do have a goal to reach as many patients or patient-related people as possible. You're asking experts and sponsors for high standard contributions. You owe your group once a year full-scale information and moral and scientific support and you had a great deal of work to do before and after your invitations for the event go out. So you want to see 100 people in your audience and not only 12 or 15. The importance of geographics. Proximity for the patients is crucial. Not only the geographics to a central location is important, but also one or two changes of means of transportation at the most. So you might have to fly and then you take the bus and that's it. You should not necessarily uh, change means of transportation several times. Allow time for traveling. Concentrate meetings between 10 and 4 or 4.30 PM. Offer simultaneous translation if necessary. That's depending on the country you live in. Despite the higher cost involved for the rent of a central and conveniently located conference place, the extra spent Swiss francs, in our case, is well placed also for a good lunch, for excellent speakers, and certainly for their expenses for the simultaneous translation of the speeches in both directions if you expect speakers and patients with different languages. Here is the key for your success. You do need gasoline to run your car. You do need money for all you like to present on this key day for your GIST community. Fund gathering is probably the most difficult task in your schedule. There is, not own, there is not one patient advocacy group that can lean back on big bank accounts. So three measures can help you to be successful. One, try to save money where it does not jeopardize your meeting quality. Two, try to motivate sponsors and donors with highly professional speakers and a top-level program of the day. Three, let the patients pay for their trip if possible. They do need to make a contribution to the day also. Now we look at the work you do before sending out your invitations for the event. Planning on time. Excellent speakers do have a full agenda. Agenda. The pharmaceutical industry does take weeks or even months for decisions, for contributions, grants, and they do want to see a program of the event they are supporting before approval. And, of course, hotels and event centers are booked out, sometimes as much as one year ahead. You do remember this place, Rüschli Kron Zürich. Last year for New Horizon 2014, we had to order and reserve, make the reservation 10 months ahead. You want your audience to return next year. You want them to spread word so the number of patients and other interested people will increase from this year to the next. Therefore, your program needs to be interesting, challenging, promising. So early after the last annual meeting, our board meets to discuss next year's event. It is advisable to keep location, dates, etc. So the organization will be minimal with the exception of the agenda. This is how our invitation looks like. Your audience wants details on what will be discussed, 
who is presenting? Do I get coffee and fuel in between? How does the day fit with my traveling schedule? Contact information for special questions. With this schedule, I'm presenting three years of Swiss GIST conferences. Try to concentrate on updates in GIST treatment technology. Focus on patient well-being issues, side effect treatments, etc. Allow for questions from the audience in public and also person to person to the speakers during coffee breaks and through lunchtime. Offer a contribution at the end of the day that invites for a smile, for a chuckle. This final speaker should cheer up, should offer a way to overcome human destiny, generate legitimate hope. Our samples of these cheer-up speeches were and are how it all began. We had that with uh, Professor Heike Yonensu. Or what can we, what can the patient learn from bees? Or mind-body medicine in oncology? Or my gist, my friend, a way how to approach a tumor, not as an enemy, enemy, but as a friend. Most of the speeches held can be found on our homepage in writing, in short form, as audio samples or for download. Now staying with our three years, we might have a few minutes to go through what we did uh, in 2013. We had this 10-year uh, anniversary uh, in 2013. Markus Wartenberg, he gave uh, an overview of the GIST history for the last 15 years and also what happens in the last 10 years between uh, Switzerland and Germany. Next subject, uh, psycho-oncology, what can be useful for GIST patients? Next subject, GIST, my friend. We were talking about that already. Second part of his approach to live with GIST, a very personal view from a general practitioner affected himself by GIST. Next, treatment standards in Switzerland and future pr perspectives. Patients always want to know what is in the pipeline, what can I expect in the future. Then, the role of the surgeon in GIST treatment or in the GIST treatment chain. Different approaches for intervention against GIST, several case studies. 2014, principle of GIST treatments, progress in GIST surgery, measuring of genetic material, DNA, of GIST in the blood. What is this biomarker good for? Next subject, how are we going to treat GIST in 2024? Far out future perspectives. What can we what can patient groups learn from bees? And then a panel discussion in the very end. From research lab to the patient, development and testing of new drugs, international cooperation in cancer research, cost effectiveness of new drugs in Switzerland, off-label use of drugs from patients, oncologists and insurance representatives view. 2015, this is going to be exactly tomorrow. GIST treatment in 2015, this is going to be a panel discussion with experts. A, a discussion which tends to be similar to a tumor board or tumor board members, like with the on oncologist, the pathologist, the surgeon, and another oncologist and a patient representative. 
What does the anesthetist do during a stomach, stomach surgery? That's the next subject. Emer emergency training for laymen. That could be very important also for people around patients. Identification of new targets against GIST tumors. And in the end of the day tomorrow, complementary medicine, mind-body medicine in oncology. Now, I wish lots of success and, ho and I hope to have given some ideas for your next patient event. Thank you for your att attention and good luck. But let me take the opportunity to say thank you to Sarah and Di Diana. They did a great job to get us all online for today's webinar. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Diana. You're very welcome. Thank you, Martin. Well, we heard a nice variety of presentations today. Um, we do have, um, I'm, I'm just going to open it up for a few questions. What's going to happen is I'm going to unmute everybody, so there may be feedback. Um, if that's the case, I'm going to mute everyone again, and then you can use the chat feature on the bottom to ask questions, and I can ask that for you, or you can. there's a way to raise your hand. Um, you'll see that um, as an option um, alongside the panel. So here I go. I'm going to unmute all, and then I will um, open the floor for people to ask questions. The conference has been unmuted. Okay. okay. So who would like to ask the first question? Hello, it's David. Hello. Go ahead, David. No, Go ahead, David. Another no, question no. that I just... Uh, no. Gerard... You mentioned the issue of thyroid and GIST. If, so I'm sorry, I just want to interrupt. There's a little bit of feedback. So while you're asking your question, you, people may want to mute their own lines so that we can hear David ask his question. Really? Go ahead, David. Not a question. Just a comment that while Gerard was, uh, Gerard was speaking, I uh, did go to PubMed and I found there are a number of I searched on GIST and thyroid, and I found a number of citations, including some recent uh, correspondence and exchange with Stratakis and others. So it looks like there really is something. I think, for, I think you did discover something. Maybe it's also being looked at in research. I, I haven't had time to look at the papers yet, of course, but I, I thought I'd mention that. Okay. Thank you, David. Thanks for pointing that out. Harar, do you have any um Comments further? Um, <clears throat> I couldn't understand it quite well, but um, I, I also saw the email. Thank you, David, for uh, pointing that out to me. I, I've looked to PubMed myself, and I found also a number of publications, but it was not so much on um, the coincidence of uh, GIST and thyroid cancer, but more on the effects on the, the working of the thyroid, uh, also due to therapy. Uh, in our Swiss group, I know at least one lady who has uh, an operation with her thyroid, and she is taking now Glivec for, I don't know, for many, many years. Uh, and, yes, that's one example. I know somebody having chest and problems with thyroid. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have questions? Uh, I think there's some of the presenters who are playing with the slide, so maybe you can just keep it on the um, intro slide for now. Um, any other questions from folks? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Alfredo. Hello, Ferdinand. Yes. Yeah, I have I have a question. Uh, being a very new GIST group, actually to have uh, international uh, uh, congregation, uh, if we could be able to share information so that we can also try and move and be on the same platform. 
as you realize that uh, Kenya has been there since 2007. We've had our GIST patients together with us since 2007, but we recently had the first GIST patient. And thereby, that makes us uh, very young people when it comes to the GIST advocacy. Uh, I would kind of like to request my panelists if we could share information with them. Uh, I have seen, for example, Martin and uh, Gerard, as well as Nikhil, having very good information. Probably this could help us also forge a very good, uh, strong, and uh, informative way to approach the future for our discussion. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Um, I think that um, having the ability to connect virtually and to hear what we're doing globally around the world to support the GIST patients is important, and also being able to meet in person and to learn from one another um, is also an extra benefit. And our hope is that this is just the first of many meetings where we can continue to connect and share best practices and support one another as we hear what um, our colleagues are doing in different countries around the world and how we can support um, one another but also learn from them. So I'm glad that you were able to to take, um, take, take some benefit from the other presentations of, the, of your um, fellow panelists. Um, okay, uh, I'll, I'll open it up for one more question. Otherwise, uh, we can end uh, this webinar today. Any, any extra question from the uh, participants? I have a comment. I would like to uh, say hi to all the panelists. Uh, it's my pleasure to join the group. I'm very happy, and I look forward to exchanging more information and meeting you. Uh, or specific, I'd like to say hi to Nikhil. Uh, please, Nikhil, pass my regards to Viji Vinkatesh. Is, uh, yes, I will. One of your colleagues in India is a very good friend of mine. Excellent. Well, thank you everyone for your time today and for the wonderful panelists who provided very informative presentations. Um, we have recorded this webinar. We will make it available to everyone who attended and also those who were not able to attend today's meeting. And like I said before, we will continue the dialogue and, uh, and continue to use technology to meet um, uh, even after the New Horizons May meeting. All right, everyone. Thank you for your time today. Thank you to the panelists. Have a good day and a good evening. Bye. Thank you. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Please stand by.